Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. There are so many broken-hearted people in the world. So many people that are full of self-hatred and self-rejection and, and they, guilt is like probably the number one problem that Christians have. Shame and blame and guilt and condemnation and competition and comparison. Your prayer life is not like super sister Christian and so there must be something wrong with you. You haven't memorized the whole book of Psalms like somebody else you heard about. Now something's wrong with you. I still have to go to the front of my Bible and look for some of the books, and I've been preaching the Bible 33 years. I don't know that I've ever made it all the way through Lamentations. I mean, I know it's there for a purpose, but I'm, I don't get it. I have to get over here to the practical stuff. I'm, you know, come on. Stop comparing yourself with everybody else and competing with everybody else. Be the person that you are. Be the best you that you can be. Let the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you. God loves you just the way you are, and He will work in you and change you if you will let Him. Amen? God loves you. He loves you, He loves you, He loves you, He loves you, and you have to know that. And then you have to learn to love yourself in a balanced way. Not in a selfish, self-centered way, but in a balanced way. Then you learn how to love God. And Jesus said, if you love me, you'll obey me. Well, what is it that he wants you to do? Let, let's keep it simple. I think if you just start by trying to love people, you'll be well on your way to success. You know why? Because you really can't do a bunch of this other sinful stuff that people do if you really love God. If you really love God and love people, you won't commit adultery. Because there's too many people that get hurt in a mess like that. So when you're really walking in love, you're not just thinking about what you want and the emotion of the moment. You're a little bit smarter than that, and you think about the fact that you're going to ruin your life, you're going to ruin your family's life, you're going to ruin this other person's life, you're going to ruin their family's lives, and you're like, you know what? I can get over this feeling. I don't need to just operate on feelings. Amen? If you're really walking in love, you're not going to be jealous of people. You're going to be happy for them. If you're really walking in love, you're not going to have a hard time saying, I'm sorry, or I was wrong. You can humble yourself if you're really walking in love. And I think a lot of times we just, we're hearing so many messages coming at us so fast. And sometimes for me, I got to just back off and say, whoa, ho, 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 ho. I need one thing to concentrate on here. <laughs> I'm kind of like this simple-minded, focused person. And God has just taught me, if you just concentrate on love, let me love you, have a healthy respect and a godly kind of love for yourself, appreciate what God has made. My goodness, you are so awesome, you ought to celebrate yourself every day. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amazing. Oh, all the scientists and the doctors, they know so much. But isn't, isn't it amazing that they really don't understand what it is that keeps that little heart of yours beating? You got to concentrate on love. Love God. What does it mean? I think, I, can, I think we can show our love for God by loving other people. Jesus said to Peter, it's recorded in John 21. Let's go there, verse 15, John 21, 15. When they had eaten, Jesus said to Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Do you love me more than these others do? With reasoning, intentional, spiritual devotion as one loves the Father. And he said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. You know that I have deep, instinctive, personal affection for you as for a close friend. So Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. There's no telling us how many times I read this in my life. And finally, about two years ago, I got it. Jesus is saying to him, okay, if you love me, go help somebody. <laughs> the second time he said the same thing, Peter, do you love me? 
Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Shepherd my sheep. <laughs> Help people. Encourage them. Keep them going in the right direction. Edify them. Build people up. Third time, Jesus said to Peter, Peter, do you love me? <laughs> the Bible says it grieved Peter that the Lord asked him the third time. Why did he ask him three times? You ever think about that? I believe it was for no more than emphasis. And I think the message was really intended not only for Peter, but for us. It would be no different than Jesus saying to Martin, Martin, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Well, then go help somebody. Martin, do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. Well, go help somebody. Martin, do you love me? Well, so now you're beginning to think, well, does he not believe me? Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Then go help somebody. He's basically talking the love message that if you really love him, then you're going to be letting him shine through you to draw other people to him. And the greatest thing that people need is to be loved into wholeness. This girl who gave the testimony tonight. Abuse starting at the age of three, abuse, 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 abuse. 21 years of counseling from all the stuff that she went through. Mental institutions over and over and over. And six months of the Word of God healed her. Why? Because she needed to know that she was loved unconditionally. That God took her the way she was. And now guess what? She can be used to help somebody else. Okay, now verse 18, after he says three times, Peter, do you love me? Now verse 18, now he tells Peter another side of the story. See, there's no point in me telling you that love is always going to be fun because it won't be. It sounds all ooey gooey if I don't tell you the whole story. So now after saying to him three times, do you love me, do you love me, do you love me, now we're about to find out why he was kind of saying, are you sure? <laughs> I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, when you were young, you girded yourself and you did your own thing and did whatever you wanted to. <laughs> you put your own belt on you and walked about wherever you wanted to go. But when you grow old, or I like to say, when you grow up in God, when you mature, When you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will put a girdle about you and carry you where you do not wish to go. <laughs> wow. Do you ever think, what am I doing here? This is not where I thought I would be. This is not where I thought my life would end up. This is not what I thought I would be doing. Just because you didn't think you'd be there doesn't mean God doesn't want you there. Just because it's uncomfortable, that doesn't mean that God doesn't want you there. God leads us in unique ways, and sometimes He'll use one thing to get us someplace, and then that thing doesn't turn out like we thought it would, but really God had something else in mind that we didn't even see. <laughs> Amen? You know, you see people on the street corners all the time with cardboard signs now saying that they'll work for food and they want help and you know obviously you got to really be led by the spirit in that because we know that that's not actually true with all of them but for some of them it may be so we try to really be sensitive and Dave and I sometimes give money and sometimes we don't it just depends on really what we sense in our heart but I was in the outer lane there was another row of cars here and I just was making a left-hand turn and I saw a girl, looked like she was in her 20s and she had kind of dark brown hair and just, she was just really dirty and she had a cardboard sign and I just, it, I just thought, we need to try to do something for her. I need to see if she needs help. Well, I had to be somewhere in the next few minutes so I called my office and I said, this is where this girl's standing, can you send somebody over and see what she needs, see if we can help her what's going on. Well, they called me back a little bit later and said, we can't find her. And so then, you know, like your mind does, I'm thinking, well, you know, gosh, I felt so strongly that we should go help her and now we, we can't find her. Another 15 minutes goes by and they call me back again and said, but let us tell you what God did. We never could find that girl, but we saw another lady that was 
hitchhiking that just looked like she was at the end of her rope. And we stopped to ask her if we could help her, and she had just gotten out of prison. She knows of your ministry. She's listened to you teach. She was about ready to just cash it all in. She didn't, ha didn't have money, didn't have a way to get anywhere. We took her somewhere. We gave her gift certificates. She said that let her know that God had his eye on her and was going to take care of her. Well, for all I know, that girl standing there was an angel. I don't know. Maybe she wasn't even a real person. Maybe just God just put an angel there and gave me that drawing because the other person wasn't where I could see her. So I've never, I've never done that. I've never called my office and said, go try to find this person and help them. I don't, you know, I don't send our people out looking for people. <laughs> but see, sometimes you think that this thing should be happening and it doesn't happen that way. But if you keep trusting God, God will do something with everything in your life. And everywhere you've been will be part of where you're going. Come on. Matter of fact, I just feel like I need to just say this. Why don't some of you just chill out about your future? Amen? I don't know what I'm going to do. Even those of you who think you know what you're going to do, you may not do that. The room is divided. Half of you think you've got it all figured out, and the other half are trying to figure it out. But the truth is, nobody knows. <laughs> Amen? So let me say it again. Why don't you just chill out about your future and start enjoying today? Act like a Christian. Just stay busy loving somebody and don't worry it to death. Don't think it to death. Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Then go help somebody. <laughs> I wasn't asking if you love me, but thank you. <laughs> okay, now, when you do love God, really love God, and when you want to walk in love with other people, some other really cool things start to happen. When you love God, you begin to become a very gracious person. Because the grace that we receive from God is a manifestation of His love. He's gracious to us. He's good to those of us who don't deserve it because He loves us. So when you love people, you will be good to people who don't deserve it. You become a very gracious person. God loves us, so He sent us a divine helper. Do we have any idea how valuable the Holy Spirit is in our life? My goodness. The helper. <laughs> That's his official name, the comforter, the helper. He's in our life to help us. God loves us, so he helps us. And if we love other people, we will help people. You ought to learn how to say about 25 times a day, can I help you with that? Can I help you with that? Dave and I were going in the grocery store the other day, and I heard him just as we were going in. Some lady was there trying to pick something up, and I heard him say, can I help you with that? And I thought, I'm glad I'm married to a gentleman. Yeah. Amen? Let me tell you something. Those are little things, but I believe they're things that God takes notice of. And I think that's more important to God than you being able to memorize all the Psalms. Yeah. Come on. I'm not saying it's not good to memorize Scripture. But when you do, do it unto God. Don't go around bragging about it. If you pray four hours every day, don't tell the sweet little new believer at church <laughs> that's finally managing five minutes every morning and thinks she's just died and gone to heaven. Now you tell her you pray four hours a day and all of a sudden she feels like a nobody. Love. <laughs> Come on, don't make me come out there and get you. <laughs> God's grace is the power of the Holy Spirit coming to us when we don't deserve it to help us and enable us to do what we need to do with ease. He helps me. 
When you partner with us in the work that God has called us to do, you make it easier for us to fulfill the call on our life. You are helping me, and that's an act of love. Oh, I tell you, Sister Joyce, if I had a million dollars, I'd give it to you. Why, you would not if you won't give me the 10 bucks you got. <laughs> you're all thinking what you're going to do when you win the lottery. Well, you know what? Why don't you just start being faithful with what you've got? Come on. Quit thinking about what you're going to do when... You've got enough to make it easy and start asking yourself what you're doing now. Help people. Well, you know, I want to know what my ministry is. I, just, I don't want to just be in help. <laughs> Sister Joyce, do you have a word for me? Help somebody! <laughs> help somebody! Help! Help somebody! <laughs> Put a smile on somebody's face! Be a lady. Be a gentleman. Be a respected and a respectable man or woman of God. Don't be a rude Christian. Don't try to run somebody over tonight trying to get out of the parking lot because you're in a hurry. Man. Mm. Another aspect of God's character is He's holy and righteous. You know what holiness means? It just means God does things right. And you know what? When we're walking in love, we're going to do things right. When we're really walking in love, we're not going to be mediocre and sloppy. We're going to do things excellent. You're not going to trash a hotel room just because somebody else has to clean it up. You're not going to steal their towels. Now, wait a minute. You're laughing too loud. You're going to be a person of integrity. You're going to keep your word. You're just going to do things right. You don't have to be a genius to look at something and say, that's not right. <laughs> I shouldn't do it that way. You don't make a mess for somebody else to clean up when you could clean it up yourself. That's not right. Come on. Blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. We're made right with God through the blood of Christ. It's come to us. Now it has to come through us in right behavior. Do you get it? Come on. We've been justified in Christ. It's a gift. We are justified with God. Now we have to let that justice flow through us and work justice in other people's lives. God has blessed us, now we need to be a blessing. The Holy Spirit comes into our lives to help us. Now we need to receive His help and go help somebody else. Are you getting it? To you and through you. Hunger and thirst after righteousness. When we do what's right, it eliminates fear from our life, the Bible says in Romans 13:3. It's amazing. You know, when we have to be afraid we're going to be caught doing something, maybe that ought to tell us something's wrong with it. If you're playing on the internet at work and your boss walks in and you suddenly flip your screen to a work thing, <laughs> you're not being paid to play on the internet. Yeah, well, that went over good. I learned this little lesson years ago. Well, at least I started learning it. We don't learn anything that quick, but I got my first hint. When I was, I'd probably only been 
stud really studying the Word just a year or so, and I was teaching a home Bible study. Dave and I didn't have hardly any money, and boy, we had to be really careful when we went to the grocery store. And I was a coupon clipper. I'd clip all these coupons and want to get everything that I couldn't. I don't even know if they still do this today, but the store would run a sale on chickens every once in a while, or toilet paper, or paper towels, or whatever it was. And, you know, it'd say, whatever, you know, you can get three chickens for whatever a pound, but only three per family, please. <laughs> but I didn't want three, I wanted a bunch, and so I'd take all my family, and <laughs> we'd all get a cart and get three chickens, and then get up in the checkout lane and act like we didn't know each other. <laughs> Come on now, I got a call of God on my life. I'm teaching a Bible study. God's trying to help me grow up. I didn't go to Bible college, but let me tell you, I went to the school of the Holy Ghost. And I was standing in line one day and I thought, I don't think I gave my daughter enough money. She's not going to have enough money for tax. And I thought, well, I can't give it to her now. They'll know we're related. <laughs> Tell you the truth. My heart is pounding in fear. And God just so sweetly said to me, Joyce, don't you know that anything you have to hide to do is not right? <laughs> don't be weary of well-doing and doing what's right. Galatians 6, 9, do not be weary in well-doing. Don't get tired of doing what's right. For in due season you shall reap if you faint not. You know, this is not hard. Don't just say, oh, I love you with the love of the Lord. I mean, if you're going to say that, then help somebody. If you're going to say that, be good to somebody. If you're going to say that, don't gossip about people behind their back. Be a faithful friend. Don't tell their secrets. Come on. For God so loved the world that He gave. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that You would give us the grace to get ourselves off our mind long enough to see the needs around us. And we know, God, that You've given us the power to reach out and meet those needs. Help us, God, to represent You well. Well, if you were to ask me today, Joyce, what do you think is the most important thing about our Christian lifestyle? This is what I would tell you. It's very simple. That we love one another just as God has loved us, and that means unconditionally and consistently. And I believe that if we really believe that we're loved by God and understand how much He loves us, then we will be able to let that love flow through us to other people. So the most important thing is just what Jesus said it is. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and you shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. 